All right, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Sadko here. Welcome back to the channel. Got a whole bunch of good crypto news stuff for you today. And the first thing that I want to talk about is pretty big news. Twitter is thinking about adding Bitcoin to its balance sheet. Twitter CFO Ned Sigal has said that the social media giant is considering whether to add Bitcoin to its balance sheet, which would be huge because we've got MicroStrategy, uh, I mean, technically kind of PayPal, Tesla, and various other companies and investment firms getting in on the Bitcoin gains. In an interview with CNBC on Wednesday, Sigal said, if Twitter employees and vendors ask to be paid in Bitcoin, then the company may consider investing in Bitcoin as part of its treasury. So we've done a lot of upfront thinking to consider how we might pay employees should they ask to be paid in Bitcoin, how we might pay a vendor if they ask to be paid in Bitcoin, and whether we need to have Bitcoin on our balance sheet should that happen, said Segal. It's something we continue to study and look at, and we want to be thoughtful about it over time, but we haven't made any changes yet. <clears throat> So basically, uh, this doesn't seem like they're going to be investing in it so that their bottom line can go up, uh, something like Tesla and MicroStrategy did, more of investing into it so that they have a slew of it that they can pay their employees with it should they want to be paid in it. However, I'm not really too big of a fan of being paid in uh, cryptocurrency. I mean, really, you could just be paid in fiat. And then if you want to invest into something else, you can be paid or you can do that. Uh, whereas uh, getting paid in uh, Ethereum or Bitcoin, like some companies have done in the past, it really, you just kind of end up having to go home with your Ethereum, uh, well, to your address, I suppose, and then cash it out uh, to simply pay your bills and things because it's generally a little difficult to pay electric company in Ethereum or Bitcoin. Although it's getting closer to that being able to happen as there's some various crypto credit cards and such. But still, you're just going to end up having to cash it out anyway. So you might as well just be paid in fiat and then choose to put the money into Bitcoin etc. However, I do uh, appreciate a company who wants to buy uh, Bitcoin regardless, but I prefer the ones that want it as an investment. And, you know, something like with, with Tesla, how they bought $1.5 billion worth of Bitcoin, uh, that means if Bitcoin goes down in price, that means that their stock is going to go down in price. And if it goes up in price, then their stock is going to have even wilder fluctuations than Tesla already has. Again, uh, this is just the uh, tweet on uh, Twitter from Squawk Box from CNBC, and it basically says the same thing. It says, we've done a lot of upfront thinking to consider how we might pay employees should they ask to be paid in Bitcoin, etc. about the vendors. Uh, so uh, there is some definitive truth to that. Uh, but again, they're not really buying it for, uh, you know, investment purposes, but it's still pretty big. Uh, moving on to some different news. Ethereum 2.0 staking hits a milestone. Now there's 3 million ETH in the Ethereum 2.0 contract, uh, in the deposit contract. Uh, but it is... Um, it's safe to say that it's still not quite a lot as the circulating supply of uh, Ethereum, you can see here, is 114 billion or excuse me, 114 million. Uh, so it's still not even quite one or, or, or 10 percent. But eventually, uh, this this staking contract is going to get very, very large. And remember that this three million F now, poof, it's gone for 18 months. There, there is no trading it. There's no getting it out. There's no way to get it out for at least 18 months, although you could probably knock a couple months off of that since the deposit contract came in December, in early December. However, with Ethereum's development, I mean, Ethereum 2.0 has been on the horizon for something like like two or three years now. I've been making videos on and off about the news of Ethereum 2.0 for quite a long time. So the, the Ethereum development is, is very, very slow. Um, it's good. Don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to bash it here, but uh, I think 18 months is probably a very conservative estimate on the Ethereum developer's part. So this could probably go on for two years and in, in just a few months, uh, probably less than a few months, if you want to put it that way, we have 3 million F in the contract. And by the time we have something like 14 million or, or so F uh, in the contract, I mean, that's going to be 10% of the entirety of the circulating supply. Also, uh, Kraken has started the uh, Ethereum uh, staking, uh, but Coinbase has not yet. Coinbase is always way behind. They said that they were going to be doing Ethereum 2.0 staking in early 2021, uh, but we all know how slow Coinbase is to react to new trends, etc. In the in the crypto world, they don't even have DeFi coins. Uh, they they just barely made. Um, 
uh, bundling, if you will, of cryptocurrency, essentially batching of cryptocurrency transactions. Uh, that wasn't more than, uh, not even more than a year ago when they should have been doing that years and years before that. So Coinbase is a little bit slow uh, for the trends. And for the longest time, they literally only had three. And then when Bitcoin Cash came out, they had four cryptocurrencies. And just now they're starting to really add more at a at a relatively good rate. Um, but when, it, when, when Coinbase does, uh, basically the way it's going to work is that when you stake your coin, uh, you'll be able to unstake that coin. However, it's not really the same coin. So if you're staking, uh, you know, 10 Ethereum or something like that in, in their staking pool, uh, and then later you, you decide, hey, I want to take that Ethereum out, I want to cash it out, or I want to send it somewhere else, uh, you can do that. However, it's just new Ethereum from their, from their just hot wallet or cold wallet or whatever that has not been staked because that cannot move once it's actually staked. So they'll just have to essentially give you liquid F in, in place of that, which I wonder if if that is actually exploitable. Uh, if somebody actually had a lot of Ethereum, you could go on Coinbase and start staking it in their pool and then just take it out and move it somewhere else, then move it back to the exchange and then restake it again. And you could just essentially lock up all of Coinbase's Ethereum. I'm sure they have a way around that by now, or they've probably thought of that little little tiny security problem that could occur on that uh, where they could essentially lock up all their eth by just by having customers just push it back and forth uh, but uh, eh, I didn't say it so now there's 3 million eth in the uh, 2.0 contract it's worth a staggering 5.4 billion dollars uh, it's currently 84,000 active validators with over 8,800 pending. And you can actually see this uh, this contract, just Google Ethereum 2.0 contract. It's going to be pretty much right there. And when you see it, you'll be able to see who's actually putting in 32 Ethereum at a time. And the last time I looked at it, there was a whole bunch of 32 Ethereum deposits from Kraken uh, and various exchanges. Um, and it is slowing down quite a bit because we, we reached pretty much uh, 500,000 or so F uh, basically by the time it opened, if I I remember correctly and then within a month there was basically two two million ethereum staked in the contract and then uh once once january sort of rolled around it went really slow so in the first like basically month uh we, we have two-thirds of what is in, in there and now it's it's only three million so it, it's actually slowing down uh significantly but uh it is significant regardless just because you know people are taking ethereum putting it in the contract it cannot move anymore and that's just less ethereum that can actually be sold bought and thrown around uh, but moving on to some different news jack dorsey in the news again so twitter technically in the news again here commits one million to coin center on top of grayscale's two million dollar donation so what is coin center oh boy i wonder what this is shaping up to be so um it's going to be a generous, genuine, a generous, I, I, I promise I could talk, year for cryptocurrency donations on Wednesday. Coin Center, the leading cryptocurrency nonprofit in Washington, D.C., announced that it had raised millions in additional funding from high profile names in the crypto industry. So it's essentially a lobbying company for cryptocurrency, and it's about time lobbying wow so basically giving a bunch of money to senators politicians think tanks all that good stuff yeah that kind of lobbying but now it's going to be for cryptocurrency and probably for uh, the benefit of either the corporations that are buying cryptocurrency more than likely or just the benefit of cryptocurrency in general so uh jerry brito I got nothing. Coin Center's executive director tweeted that his organization had received enough donations to claim the one million in match contributions from Grayscale Investments, the world's largest crypto fund manager. Less than three weeks ago, Grayscale announced that it had donated one million to the advocacy group and pledged an additional one million in matched contributions. A few days later, digital currency exchange Kraken announced that it was pledging a hundred thousand to Coin Center. So these people aren't giving away millions for no reason. Uh, they never do. Uh, and when it goes into politicians' hands, they never use it for just a donation either. It, it always comes with some kind of price. 
eventually later in the future, hey, remember when I gave you that $3 million or that $2 million? Don't, uh, don't vote on this bill that's going to do something bad to our cryptocurrency uh, or vote on this bill that's going to do something great to our cryptocurrency. So uh, lobbying, uh, the world's oldest profession, the world's, th we'll call it the world's third oldest profession. Moving on, MasterCard's going to let merchants accept payments in crypto this year. So MasterCard did a, a quick double take with their head saying, oh, Visa's getting in on the cryptocurrency. We better make an announcement that we are also getting in on cryptocurrency. What a coincidence. MasterCard is planning to give merchants the option to receive payments in cryptocurrency later this year, according to which it's so late. They're so out of touch. They're just so late on this. Yeah, later this year, it's fine. When everything's going to be $80,000, then we'll do it. But I don't suppose it really matters to them what the price is, just how much fees they're getting. According to a source familiar with the matter, the functionality will see MasterCard's customers' digital currency payments settled in crypto at participating merchants. A first for the financial giant. The company has not yet disclosed which digital currencies it intends to support or where. I mean, I think we can go with Bitcoin right off the bat probably Ethereum. Uh, and, you know, the, the, the big three that people really like to adopt, you know, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, should they adopt many other coins? Of course, but uh, I'm guessing those three at first. The details shed new light on CEO Michael Maybach's Q4 pledge to integrate digital currency payments directly on our network and a move the new chief helming his first earnings call on January 28th said will provide maximal flexibility to customers. Maximal flexibility? Why don't you just say maximum flexibility? It's a really weird way to say that uh, to merchants and customers alike. So um, it kind of sounds like from the article that they might actually want to do actual cryptocurrency payments. So previously, MasterCard supported limited cryptocurrency transaction through its crypto board partners, Wirex and Uphold, which I consider Uphold absolutely the worst exchange um, ever. Um, I mean, I, I think Cryptopia is above Uphold. Uphold, I, I cannot stand going to Uphold. Um, the only reason why I ever visit Uphold is for BAT, um, for, for BAT um, uh, donations. Um, and it's just an absolute chore every time. Uh, it, it's, it's an unbelievably terrible exchange. But those programs only cover payment, not settlement. The coins are converted to fiat currency well before reaching the merchant. The new initiative promises to upend that dynamic among the store owners and businesses who opt in. They will be able to conduct their business beyond the bounds of the fiat ecosystem, assuming, of course, their customers have crypto they're willing to spend. Um, <clears throat> so it's hardly a safe bet given the buy and hold mantra pervading the world's biggest cryptocurrency. The source pointed out uh, most Bitcoin buyers primarily treat their coins as investment vehicles, not payment tools. And the source underscored there's no guarantee MasterCard's crypto settlement initiative will support Bitcoin. Well, let me just say, uh, yeah, probably going to support Bitcoin. Uh, if they were like, hey, we're only going to support Patcoin. I think that would be quite a surprise. I think it would be equally surprising if they were like, hey, we're not going to support Bitcoin. Why would you not? Bitcoin is the brand name. Uh, so yeah, pro probably Bitcoin. Uh, let's go with a 99% plus certainty on that one. Um, but interesting that they want to actually uh, actually move cryptocurrency back and forth instead of just paying in cryptocurrency, get moving to fiat and then, and then selling, which really doesn't do that much for for the world of cryptocurrency. That just means that one third party uh, needs to hold a bunch of Bitcoin uh, and fiat. And then as people send them Bitcoin, they're just going to send the fiat outwards. And it, I, I really don't think that does too much for the cryptocurrency world. I think it's a good step at the very least. Um, but I like the idea of sending Bitcoin straight to uh, people. However, MasterCard's going to get in the way with that. Uh, and the Bitcoin white paper is very specific about why Bitcoin was created to avoid third parties over the internet because uh, over the internet, if you want to send somebody some money and you're not using cryptocurrency, you're going to have to use like Venmo or PayPal. I think Facebook has a, a, a messenger where you can send money and there's always a third party in between. In fact, there's still a third party. It's called BitPay. So if you go on a new egg or something like that, you want to buy a graphics card, you send BitPay uh, some Bitcoin and then BitPay sends new egg or whatever particular corporation that's using uh, BitPay uh, sends them fiat. So uh, so they're basically just completely destroying the narrative uh, of cryptocurrency there. Uh, but 
at the very least, there is some more adoption. Moving on to some interesting news, Larry Ellison's Oracle could be next in line to buy Bitcoin, says Max Kaiser. So um, let's see, speculations quickly circulated that Apple could or should be next in terms of uh, companies that are buying uh, Bitcoin. So we've seen MicroStrategy buying well over a billion Bitcoin. We've seen e Elon Musk's Tesla buy $1.5 billion in Bitcoin. PayPal has now adopted it. Grayscale is pumping it out. Many other companies are starting to buy in. Uh, MicroStrategy had a... Um, had a seminar uh, that basically taught other corporations how they can legally go about buying Bitcoin and legally investing in it, et cetera, with their extra funds. And uh, we're, we're going to see we're going to see a lot of that in 2021. This is this is the year for sure in terms of uh, corporate adoption. Um, and I think any corporation or investment firm or hedge fund, et cetera, in the future, they're going to look back and you're, you're going to be um, you're going to look very silly, quite frankly, that you didn't invest in, into Bitcoin uh, because just simply buying it uh, raises the price and then you're just instantly uh, kind of effectively instantly in the green because of it, because you just threw up the price quite a bit, whether you bought it over the counter or over an exchange. Uh, and then other people seen, oh, look, a thousand dollar increase in Bitcoin. So they pile their money in, too. And that's essentially that's essentially Bitcoin in a nutshell. Um, you know, it, 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 it's interesting because if you bought one point five billion dollars in Bitcoin like Tesla uh, in month one, then month two comes along and you say, I want to buy one point five billion dollars in Bitcoin again, you're going to get less Bitcoin. So there's this essentially uh, increase in price and diminishing returns. Uh, with your with your fiat money. So, you know, that 1.5 billion Bitcoin might have bought you uh, some odd thousands of Bitcoin. And then the next month, it's going to buy you some odd thousands of Bitcoin, but a few percent less. Uh, and that's just the way it's going to go up and up and up. Uh, and eventually, the only people who are going to be able to move the price of Bitcoin are are these corporations that are going to be buying billions of dollars at a time. And one could argue that's a super good thing because we're raising the price. Uh, and then you could also argue that, that, that that's a bad thing because it's going to be harder for the regular Joe to buy into Bitcoin. Um, and once again, kind of against the Bitcoin white paper because it was really pretty much anti-bank and anti-third party and anti-Wall Street. Um, and yet they're they're getting in on it. So I, I wonder what Satoshi would think about this, about what's happening. Would he be proud of how much uh, how much of a market cap and how 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 popular Bitcoin is right now? Or would he be a little bit disappointed that, uh, you know, it kind of turned into uh, just this monetary struggle uh, of warehouses filled with ASICs, of, of, of desperate miners trying to make money and trying to get that block, and then uh, all the institutions coming in on it as well. Um, so Max Kaiser, uh, the founder of Heisenberg Capital, seems to have a different company in mind of who's going to be the next to buy. In a recent post, a Max Kaiser Report host claimed that the next big corporate BTC buyer will be Larry Ellison's Oracle. Crypto Potato reached out to Kaiser for additional information, but he refused to share details about his source out of protective considerations. Crypto Potato, you guys are just not cool enough to talk to uh, Max Kaiser, that's for sure. Founded in 1977, headquartered in Texas, Oracle is a multi multinational computer technology corporation ranked as 82nd largest U.S. company by total revenue in the Fortune 500 list. So a, essentially a Fortune 100 greater than Fortune 100 company. Interestingly, Ellison also joined the board of directors at Tesla on December 27th, 2018. Before doing so, he had purchased 3 million shares and became the second largest shareholder after Elon Musk. Uh, Max Kaiser also said that even Ford will come at a higher price, Kaiser says. Uh, although he, he didn't share his source, Kaiser offered a compelling opinion uh, on the ongoing trend of corporations getting into Bitcoin. He believes the entrance of Maverick CEOs like MicroStrategy and Musk is somewhat expected as both have strong backgrounds in science and engineering. He also predicted that one of America's largest motor companies, namely Ford, will come on board eventually. However, the price will be nowhere near the current levels. He says, Bitcoin is always been attractive to the extreme talent on the uh, cypherpunk and corporate periphery that charts its own course. By the time Ford Motor Company adds Bitcoin to its balance sheet, the price will be 40 times higher. Yeah, you get them, Max Kaiser. It's true. Uh, the, corporations move so slow sometimes that um, 
You got to buy now, buy the dip corporations. Moving on to coin market cap here. Interestingly, on coin market cap, uh, the Wall Street Bets coin has been removed as Wall Street Bets is not looking so good right now with the GameStop absolutely plummeting in price. Looks like they gave up the fight on that one. So instead, Coin Market Cap has removed Wall Street Bets coin, which didn't exist, and now has replaced it with Model 3 Tesla coin with a price of $37,990. I'm not sure what the exact uh, dealio is with that exact price uh, and, and the market cap. I don't know. Is that the market cap of Tesla? I figured it would be higher than that. I, I don't know. Uh, but they threw it on there because uh, reasons. Uh, so 44781 Bitcoin dumped a little bit uh, since that 48000 high after uh, Tesla had bought in. But that's not particularly surprising. Again, uh, every $10,000 we're going to be going up in Bitcoin now is going to have increased incredible sell orders. Uh, and again, it, it didn't get close to 50,000. I think it was like 49,000 or 40, high 48,000. But there's going to be a lot of sell orders around 50,000. People love those psychological sell orders. And again, don't believe me, go on to an exchange, uh, lower that aggregation real, real high or, or raise the aggregation, I don't know, uh, on the order books and take a look uh, as high as you possibly can in the order books on an exchange. There's going to be packing a ton of Bitcoin for sale at 50,000. So that's why we typically sort of uh, biff, if you will, off every 10,000. Once it gets to 40,000, we kind of struggle to go over it. It goes over it a little bit and then just gets pushed down. Uh, why is that? Well, because there's, there's just tons of sell orders up there. People think that, you know, the steam is running out around that time. Uh, people like to put their, people don't like to just pick a random uh, you know, like a random sell order. They don't want to pick $49,987. No, they're going to put it at 50000 But I'll tell you what, put that sell order at $49,999. Going to sell before everybody else, uh, but probably shouldn't be selling at $49,000. It's going to go a lot higher uh, regardless. But 1727 s so the market dipped you know, a little bit overall. A Cardano, nearly a dollar as well. And XRP actually doing somewhat well at $0.51. Cents. Uh, Polkadot, 24 but that's about all I have for you guys today. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure you like, subscribe, share the video. It helps me out a lot. My social media in the description below. And memberships are active on the channel. You look 32% cooler when you comment on the channel with a membership badge. Whew, you really do. But hey, it's not my gains. Either way, I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I'll see you guys next time.